Yo, it's Mike, and I'm about to hit you with 13 film photography hacks because I care about you. Now these uh, hacks might not be as mind-blowing as you may expect them to be, but consider them more as knowledge to make your film photography experience a little more convenient. So let's begin. Battery cover slots on Japanese-made cameras were made to perfectly fit a 10 yen coin, so stop fussing with pennies and nickels and quarters, head down to your local currency exchange, snag a 10 yen coin to put an end to all your battery fiddling problems. The length of the original strap that came with your point and shoot indicates your camera's closest focusing distance, so hold it out like so and you get a quick glance at how close your particular camera can focus. Pushing and pulling film on a point and shoot camera can kind of be a pain in the butt since most of these cameras are automatically going to read the film's ISO off the film's DX coding, but luckily there's a workaround for this. Depending on which of these squares you either scrape off or tape back on with electrical tape, your camera's going to read that film as a different ISO setting. Here's an important chart, I'm also linking it in the video description, bing! Uh, and here's how you interpret this chart. The numbers on the left hand side uh, are the desired ISO setting, and the black squares going across the top uh, represent the top row of your film's DX coding, the top row right up here. Uh, so all you need to do is take the DX coding already on your film canister and make it match the one you want in the chart, and hey, you fool your point and shoot camera. Have you got a camera strap and way too much film to carry around? got the solution for you. Go to your local fabric store, buy a section of elasticated stretchy fabric, cut a two inch long section, uh, it can be as wide as you want, and stitch it onto your camera strap and presto zesto, you have a slick little film holder that works for both 35 millimeter and 120 film, just like so. If you want to take a really close look at your negatives but don't have a loop around, fear not. All you need to do is take a 50 millimeter lens, flip it around, and suddenly, Everything is magnified. Leather conditioner will not only make your leatherette and camera cases supple and luxurious, but it'll also help deepen the black enamel paint finish on your film cameras. So if you want everything looking real spiffy and a jiffy, give your, give your gear a buff with some of this stuff. If you're finding your rangefinder a little dim, cut a small piece of black tape and lay it on the front of viewfinder window in a way that matches the size and the location of the rangefinder patch inside. It'll instantly add a ton of contrast and make focusing a snap. Don't have a filter thread and have the wrong size filter? Bloody rubber bands and zip ties to the rescue, what can't they fix? Just take your filter, shove some rubber bands on it, and it'll hold your filter in place for a day of shooting. It, uh, it looks eclectic, but it gets the job done. Now, we unfortunately can't be out shooting with our gear at all times, which is a huge bummer, I know. But when you're uh, storing your gear in between shoots, keep your lenses out of cabinets and closets, and keep the lens caps off. The UV light present in the sunshine flooding through your windows is an awesome preventative against lens fungus. And it's also a pretty cool way to show off your gear. Check out what I have here. I have a bookcase and it has some glass panels on it. It lets the sunshine in, keeps the dust out. Best of both worlds, real nice. Old mechanical cameras get creaky and gummed up with all sorts of unpleasantries over time. And if you're not looking to fork over a bunch of cash for professional cleaning, lighter fluid may come to the rescue. The idea is to apply a few drops of lighter fluid into whatever mechanical component that isn't working as well as it used to. And the lighter fluid will wash the grime and the dirt away. Please use lighter fluid very, very sparingly. Take it in an eyedropper, take it in a syringe, work it in drop by drop, and work the mechanical component through after every drop. If you put too much in it, it's flood city, everything's ruined. Trust me, I know. If you don't want to carry a bunch of stuff with you on a day of shooting and want to keep things extra simple, your film canister has actually a lot of potential. You can take your film canister with film inside, fold up a little bit of change, slide it in there, and you also have enough room on top to throw in a bus token, some public transit fares, and it all still close up nicely. You now have a very portable piece of essentials that you can just throw in your pocket. I know it sucks to waste as precious a commodity as film, but I've dedicated this roll to testing all my cameras. It's been exposed to light, it's never gonna record an image again, but I run it through all of my cameras to make sure that the film transports work, to make sure that all the motors work, and I bought myself a little film leader retrieval tool so I can use this one roll over and over and over again. And lastly, you will inevitably acquire about 7 million knickknacks the deeper you get into photography. And I've chosen to store all of my little odds and ends in a toolbox. It's a quick way to get a quick glance and make sense of all the junk you have. And it keeps things organized and relatively manageable. And that's a wrap. I hope you find some of these pointers useful. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck and good lights. See you all in the next video.